How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ubuntu Touch as an alternative platform for digital minimalism. Let's get started. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jose, and here we talk about digital minimalism. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to subscribe. Today we're taking a look at Ubuntu Touch as an alternative platform for digital minimalists. And essentially I've talked about Ubuntu Touch before, but I wanna make an even you know, more in-depth video, and that's what's going to be today, just showcasing you the capabilities of the operating system in 2021, some things that have changed that allow me to recommend it better, and honestly, before I have my kind of doubts and a couple of things here and there, but now it's becoming an even more robust platform and I think a very good alternative for those that don't want to be on Android or iOS. So let's jump into it. Ubuntu Touch is developed by UbiPorts Foundation. It was first developed by Canonical, but they dropped the support and essentially this foundation now took over what you see here. You see a couple of duplicate things and I'll explain that in just a little bit, but essentially you have your regular apps, phone calls, text messages. I'm running Ubuntu Touch on a Nexus 5. This is a legacy device, it's quite old. However, you can get it on more recent devices and I'll link in the description below for the devices that they support. They support OnePlus, Xiaomi devices, a couple of Samsung devices here and there, so make sure to check it out. You have your contacts, you have your settings. I am running at this point. Ubuntu Touch 16.04. It is a little bit dated in the sense that Ubuntu, the regular canonical release is until 20.04. 21.04 release is uh, supposed to be this year. But again, they're behind because it's a foundation. It's not canonical developing this, but essentially it's volunteers that are making this happening. But they do a pretty good job. So Ubuntu 16.04, you have your regular uh, OS builds, uh, Wi-Fi, cellular, uh, you have uh, Bluetooth, hotspot, you can even add a VPN. And then you have other things like security and privacy. And the ability that you have here is that Ubuntu Touch allows you to customize everything and you even have a terminal. For those of you who are aware of what Linux is or use Linux, then you are able to customize pretty much everything with the operating system. You're able to update the packages manually. You're able to even connect this to a computer and use it as a terminal, as an Ubuntu software uh, terminal. The browser has improved, and I think that that's one of the things that I had caveats before. So if you're looking for a replacement smartphone, something that allows you to use your smartphone less, but still allows you to be connected, well, the browser used to be very terrible before, but the newer updates are better, they're more reliable, and they allow you to open pretty much everything. The web standards have been updated, and I really think that's a great addition to here to the Ubuntu software. Uh, and you know, a couple of the reasons why you will get some of these things is essentially for privacy. Uh, Ubuntu allows you to customize everything at the user level. If you're a tinkerer, then you're able to change a, a lot of things, especially using the terminal. As you see, the browser is not amazing. It's not the best thing ever. It's not, it doesn't have all of the features, but it allows you to search pretty easily and to get new tabs or, you know, go into something. It does have replacements for a couple of things. Let's go into the store because I want to showcase that to you guys. It doesn't have all of the social applications, but you know, as a digital minimalist, you're trying to stay away from that. So that's a good thing. Um, but even if you're just trying to replace a lot of things, you can still update things. As you see, here's a list of apps of things I have installed. There's Reddit clients, Telegram, uh, there's also a Signal client if you want to use that. So there's a lot of third-party software, a good support within the community for third-party applications. And if you need to use a web app, you can use it now on the web browser, which has improved. I personally like some of the apps, especially the podcasting app, Podbird. The native apps work really well, but even then they, they also have web apps or progressive web apps. And that allows you to work a little bit better within the software. I think that it's a good replacement, especially knowing that you can also customize it in, in between there. You have that, this thing called Launcher Modular, is something that I downloaded. I, you don't have to sign in to download apps, which I think is another advantage for privacy. Again, if you want to sign in, it's to get feedback or things of that nature. But again, 
it's it's a good system. It allows you to get the, the main essentials. And if you need extra things, this is where I wanted to showcase the and box. So essentially, there is another layer that can run within Ubuntu called Anbox, Android in a box, essentially. It's pretty experimental, but most apps work decently. That's why you saw a lot of duplicates here. You see F-Droid twice or email twice, or you see a lot of things repeated. It's essentially because there are some tweaks that you need to do in order to make it work. But when you use another launcher for this system, then it removes all of that and you're able to use it pretty quickly. So here we have this launcher, it looks different. You can add a couple of widgets, you can configure the weather there. You have your calendar, things of that nature, and you open the apps. And here I have WhatsApp, for example. This is one example of WhatsApp and how to use it. So WhatsApp is one of those applications that a lot of people use and a lot of people have, you know, I cannot move without a WhatsApp client. Well, with a couple of tinkering, using the terminal, doing things here and there, using your computer to make sure that you get a couple of extra you know, functionalities for the phone, you're able to use Android in a box. And I'm able to run essentially WhatsApp and other applications as well. I have been able to load in the past, some with success, some without success, uh, Uber, Spotify, things that are almost kind of like the necessary things for some people. And that's like their gripes that they're not moving. Of course, it takes some tinkering, but there's a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of documentation out there that can help you get into that. The uh, task management, as you see here, is decently good. And again, you see a lot of good, very wholesome, ju just the basics and a little bit more if you want to use and stay away from Android and iOS. One of the things that I had gripes with recommending Ubuntu Touch in the past was that there was not a great GPS unit or the GPS did not work very reliably. I'm happy to report that in 2021, Ubuntu Touch 20 uh, or 1604 is working very, very well. So the GPS module takes a little bit to pinpoint, maybe about, you know, a couple 30 seconds or so. But after that, it works really well. It works very reliably. You're able to load uh, different directions and it follows you. So it's, it's very good. You can either use pure maps, which you saw there. Uh, and there is another one that you can use, which is UNAV. And UNAV works even a little bit faster than Pure Maps. So it just depends, you know, hit or miss. But these are native applications, especially for a lot of people that have these gripes with Ubuntu Touch or with alternative operating systems. I think Ubuntu Touch is becoming more mature, more mature, more mature. And, you know, my location, especially for GPS and things of that nature, is essential for some people. So now I can wholeheartedly recommend it. I used Ubuntu Touch in the past. I use it from time to time just to test and see how it's progressing. And I'm happy to report that in 2021, I think it's a viable alter alternative, not only for those that want to switch from Android or iOS, but those that want to reduce their usage and also go into the digital minimalist. Maybe you're not ready to spend on a premium dumb phone, or maybe you don't like the implementations from the dumb phones that are currently available. Ubuntu Touch is a third option right there. No smartphone, still smartphone, but not like the mainstream ones. Not a dumb phone, but you know, an alternative. And one that works here in the US because these devices are US devices. You will not be shut down in the near future. So again, there, as you see, it's taking a little bit to get to the GPS, but once it gets it, it locks it in and it allows you to do a lot of things. Um, a couple of final thoughts when it comes to my usage of Ubuntu Touch. It's been very good. Honestly, what I like the best is that this device is about six years old. The Nexus 5 is a very old device and I'm really, really glad that this is still supported. I'm happy because, you know, this device runs for maybe $100 and still has good battery life, decent battery life, maybe about a day or two since I, you use it less. In, in Ubuntu consumes less resources. so. Again, you can customize a lot of things, regain privacy, get open source applications into this thing, and essentially connect it to a computer and run it as a full terminal, a full operating system in your laptop or your monitor at home. So I think it has a, a lot of pros, a lot of good things here for, for the Ubuntu crowd, and more things are coming in the future, so stay tuned. If you have any questions about Ubuntu Touch or you want me to test something in specific, I know people have one application here, one application there, Make sure to drop it in the comments. I'll be able to engage with you guys in there. And thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. 
I'll see you in the next one.